guys, welcome back to Physics Form Focus SM. So today we continue chapter 3 gravitation. So you can refer to your textbook on page 88. Okay, in my first video I have discussed about force between two objects. That is Newton's law of universal gravitation. So today we want to discuss when the object orbiting, for example, a satellite orbiting at the Earth, there will be one force that maintain the the satellite in orbit. So now, we, we, if you remember, we have discussed in the chapter two about Newton's first law. Okay, Newton's first law tells us that only a force can cause a body to move out a straight line path in circular motion. The direction of the body is continually changing at every instant. Therefore, a force must be acting. That force is called centripetal or central force since it, it acts towards the circle of the circular path. Meaning, in order for the satellite to maintain orbiting surrounding the Earth, there must be a force that, that holds it so that it will maintain that motion. So motion in a circular path, there must be force applied. The force applied, we call it central, centripetal force. All circular motion requires a centripetal force, otherwise the body continues in a straight line path. Same thing eh, when, when a car moving around a roundabout, roundabout, we need to st step on a brake pedal in order to maintain that circular motion or the curve motion. So force needs to be applied. Okay, look at this one. We tie a cock with a string and at the end of the string we, we hang a load. So now let the cock rotate in horizontal motion so that produce circular motion. So when a body is rotated at certain uniform speed with the string almost horizontal, the effect of gravitational force on the circular motion of the body can be ignored. Though the speed is uniform, the direction of motion of the body keeps changing. So you can see the direction of V, the velocity, direction keep changing eh, once the object rotates or moves in uniform circular motion. So the force is required to change the direction of body. We have discussed the effects of force. Eh? We, if you want to change direction of motion, we need to apply force. Okay. So in this case, Tension in the string acting as the force. So meaning the tension of the string now is called centripetal force. Same thing happened to the satellite. So the, for the case of satellite, for example, satellite orbiting the Earth. So the gravitational force on satellite act as centripetal force. So you can look at this diagram also. So the centripetal force is the force perpendicular to velocity of the object moving along a curved path. The centripetal force is directed towards center of curvature of the path. So you can see the man still holding the, the rope. So the object maintains eh, the uniform circular motion. Once he releases, you can see the object now flown away from the circle path. Oh, so the one meaning no more force supply, meaning the object cannot maintain eh, the uniform circular motion. So what we can say that we need a force to maintain the object that orbiting surrounding the other objects. So we call it centripetal force. Okay, centripetal force in the motion of satellites and planets. When a body moves in a circle at uniform speed, the body is said to be in uniform circular motion. As example, satellite orbiting the Earth. An object in circular motion always experiences changes in the direction of its motion even though its space is fixed. So you can see to maintain the circular motion, the speed keep changing. No, the velocity keep changing eh? or direction eh, keep changing. The satellites always experience gravitational force acting towards the center of the Earth. So the gravitational force on satellite act as centripetal force and direction of the centripetal force is towards the center of the earth. Okay now based on the second law F equals to Me. All circular motion requires a centripetal force. Newton's second law of motion tells us that force equals mass time acceleration. 
Therefore, centripetal force must produce an acceleration. So using the same formula. So we call it centripetal acceleration and direction is also towards the center of the earth, for example. Since the force acts towards the center of circular path, the acceleration must also be towards the center. So all circular motion is accelerated motion. The acceleration is always directed in or in the direction of centripetal force. Okay, now, what are the uh, factors that affect magnitude of centripetal force? So you can see there are three factors here. Number one is mass of the body. Number two is the linear speed. 3 is the radius of the circle. So you have this formula to represent the centripetal force. So we have F equals mv squared divided by R. Where F is centripetal force, M is mass of the body, V is linear speed, and R is radius of the circle. So linear speed shows how fast a body moves in a circular motion. Okay? The velocity that keeps changing eh, is direction. So we call it linear speed. Okay, by comparing the formula from force F equals to MA, the Newton second law, and the formula for centripetal force F equals to MV squared divided by R, we know that by comparing these two formula, so we get MA equals MV squared divided by R, so we can cancel M. Thus, we get centripetal acceleration A equals to V squared divided by R. Or we just compare from here, M, so that's A is equals to V squared divided by R. So this formula is known as centripetal acceleration, where V is the linear speed of satellite, R is radius of the orbit of satellite. Okay? So object launch with sufficient, sufficiently high linear speed will follow trajectory that is circulating the earth. The object will not return to the earth. So meaning the linear speed must be high enough so that it will maintain orbiting in the orbit. Okay, look at my example using the formula. Figure shows a hammer through athlete swinging an iron ball in a horizontal circle before releasing it. What is the centripetal force that acts on the iron ball when the iron ball is moving at a speed of 20 meter second to the power negative 1? Okay, now we look at the diagram. So we have the radius from the point where the man is holding the string. So until the hammer, eh, the hammer. And then that one we mark as small r equivalent to 1.8 meter. The mass of the hammer, 7.2 kilogram. Thus, we have the formula, the centripetal force. So, F equals to mv squared divided by r. So, we just substitute here. So, we have m7.2, the velocity uh, or the speed, uh, 20. So, 20 squared divided by r, 1.8. Thus, we get 1,600 newtons. So, this is the centripetal force that produced. Okay, now example 2. Figure shows a weather satellite orbiting the Earth at height h 480 km. Linear speed of the satellite is 7.62 times 10 to the power 3. The radius of the Earth r is given. What is centripetal acceleration of the set of the satellite? Okay, so we have height of satellite in kilometers, so you convert to meter. Linear speed and radius of the Earth. Okay, now go. we use the same formula, A equals to V squared divided by R. But remember, the small r is the distance between center of the Earth to the satellite. To the satellite. That's why here we need to add a radius of the, of the Earth plus height of the satellite. That we have R plus H. So now we just solve the problems. And then we get A equals to 8.48 meters second negative 2. So this is the value of centripetal acceleration for the satellite. Okay, now, we also can determine the mass of, mass of the Earth or mass of the Sun, for example. So how can we use the, the formula that we discussed before to produce formula so that we can calculate mass of the Earth? Okay, now, 
Remember, we have discussed about Newton's universal law of gravitation. So F equals to G, capital M is mass of Earth, and small m is mass of Moon, and divided by R squared, distance between center of Earth and Moon. So for this case, to in order to calculate mass of the Earth, let's assume Moon revolves the Earth, means the Moon orbiting the Earth. So the, the small m actually is mass of the moon, and the capital M is mass of the earth. Then we have G, capital M, small m divided by R squared. And then the gravitational force is actually is equivalent to centripetal force. So we have formula for centripetal force, F equivalent to mv squared divided by R. Then these two formulas are same. So now we can cancel m for both sides, m and small m, mass of the moon. Okay, so we get, and then what we do the next, okay, we want to substitute the value of v. How we get this value of v? Okay, now circumference of a circle of, uh, with radius r is equivalent to pi r. We assume the, the, the circle uh, in a circle shape, so the circumference is 2 pi r. Okay, the time taken for one circle, we call it period T, or also we call it period of revolution of the moon surrounding the earth. So from the formula, V equals to distance divided by time, thus we get V equivalent to distance for one complete uh, circle is 2 pi R, and the time taken for one complete revolution or one complete circle is period t, thus we get the speed equivalent to 2 pi r divided by t. Then we substitute the value of v here into this formula, meaning 2 pi r per t eh, square. This you just substitute here and then do some cancellation. In the end, you will get this formula m equivalent to 4 pi square r to the power 3 divide by g t squared. Okay? So in this case, when you want to determine mass of the earth, we assume uh, or we use the case of moon eh, that revolve the earth, meaning the value of r actually is the radius of orbit for the moon that evolve, that revolve the earth. And the t here is the period of the moon that revolve the earth. Okay? So from there, we can calculate, then we get what is mass of Earth. Okay, so we can uh, use the same formula in order to calculate the mass of Sun. So we use the same formula. Okay, look at these two situations. So data needed to calculate mass of the Earth. So we assume Moon revolve the Earth. So the small m will become mass of the Moon. Okay, so the... the information needed for this one is radius of orbit of any satellite or the moon. If we use moon meaning the orbit radius of orbit of the moon and period of revolution of the moon, then we can get a mass of the earth uh, using this one. Okay. So uh, if you want to find the mass of sun, for example, let's say earth revolves the sun. So M will become mass of the Earth, All right? But we don't uh, actually. You will cancel both sides. So here, there's no factor eh? mass of the Earth. Okay. So R will be radius of any planet. For example, if the Earth, meaning radius of orbit of Earth, eh? orbiting the Sun, and the period of revolution is uh, for the Earth that orbiting surrounding this the Sun. Okay. Different from there, we use the same formula. Then we get mass of the Sun. Okay, now look at some uh, problem solving using the formula. Okay, the first question, period of revolution of the moon around the earth, T is given. Radius of the moon orbit also given. Calculate mass of earth M. Okay, let's try number one. Okay, we use the formula M equals to 4 pi squared R to the power 3 G T squared uh, divided by G T squared. So 4 pi r, pi square, just use calculator eh, to find the value of pi. Eh. And then r, 
r is equivalent to radius of the moon's orbit so 3.83 times 10 power 8 so then to the power 3 divided by g the value of universal constant so 6.67 times 10 to the power negative 11 t square t is the period of revolution of moon around the earth so also given 2.36 times 10 to the power 6 square so we get the value of mass of the earth 5.97 times 10 to the power 24 kilogram okay now number two if you want to calculate mass of the sun you can try number two so you use the same method the r will be radius of orbit 1.5 times 10 to the power 11 and then the period is one year for the earth to revolve around the sun the period is one year so one year you need to convert to second okay so because we use the si unit here so convert to second huh? okay so you need uh, one year how many days and then uh, one day is 24 hours then one hour is how many seconds okay so you try that so you can calculate mass of sun so I think the, the end that's the end of this topic about centripetal force. You can try more questions on this and get familiar with all the formula that we have discussed. So uh, you can subscribe and like and tap for more oncoming videos. Support physics teacher. Thank you. Bye.